If you wanna make money as a content creator in 2024, it's pretty simple. You get people who've never seen you before to notice your stuff, click some links, and make you money in one way or another, right? Courses, affiliate links, whatever it is. But it's easier said than done in this sea of endless content videos, shorts, articles, all of it. So in this video, I'm covering seven of the easiest, cheapest, beginner-friendly ways to make 10K a month, and I'll give you a few bonuses along the way and my number one way to generate revenue in 2024 from just posting some stuff on the internet. I'm excited to jump in. Before we get started, make sure to click the link in the description and top comment below. Sign up for the free masterclass, 80 minutes of free training, how to start an online business. Let's get into the topic for today. So first we have to think about it this way, like blogging's getting a little bit tougher because of all these algorithm updates, helpful content, product reviews, all of that, media sites, it's getting a little bit tougher. It's not impossible, obviously, it's still a great business model, but there's challenges and same with like Instagram, right? There's tons of accounts, millions and billions of videos out there. I don't know how many, but people are creating all kinds of content, but like 99% of people aren't making money. So really we need to build revenue streams online that are algorithm proof in a way. So basically what you have to do is you have to take people from a third party platform that you don't own and then get them onto something that you do own, like an email list. It's really that simple. So take them from Twitter or LinkedIn or Instagram or YouTube and get them into something that you own an owned asset. So I talk a lot about affiliate marketing, ads, blogging, and of course, those are still great passive income generators, but I wanna talk about some different ideas here. So in this video, I wanna do something a little bit different, and I have seven new ways to kind of build different revenue streams into your life, into your personal brand with different platforms. So the first business here is a newsletter business. Now, newsletters are becoming a hugely popular thing. It's pretty simple. You sign up with a tool like Substack or Beehive, and you get people to sign up for a free newsletter. You capture their email address, you need a single landing page, you capture their email address, and then this is mainly, you know, the monetization pack here is mainly sponsorships. So you build the email up to a decent size and then you charge for sponsorships, kind of like YouTube or podcast sponsorships, right? Somebody signs up as a brand to be included in your newsletter. It's nice because it's a free newsletter most of the time, right? It's not a paid newsletter where every subscriber is paying you $10 a month, but a free newsletter is an interesting new business model. There's an example here of TLDR, the multi-million dollar newsletter run by one guy. So it's really interesting article. He has 750,000 subscribers, makes over $5 million annually. There's five, I think, emails a week, or um, uh, yeah, five emails a week. And the rate card, he's charging anywhere from $5,000 to $15,000 per sponsorship spot, which is a four to $7 cost per click, right? So it's actually somewhat realistic. If you can have a decent sized email list and get a brand, you know, a thousand clicks, you can make a good amount of sponsorship revenue just from sending a single email. So what's interesting about this approach is you can use different platforms to build your email list. It doesn't have to just be through a blog or a YouTube channel. It's primarily, this is a text-based business. So much like blogging is a text-based business, funneling traffic from Google to the blog to affiliate links and ads. This one is also a text-based business, but it primarily lives by getting people from third-party platforms like Twitter and LinkedIn and maybe Reddit ads and things like that to the newsletter. Now, what's nice about this one is you can grow it in a number of different ways, and it really can be cohesive with your blogging strategy. So for example, you can post things on LinkedIn and Twitter, right? Getting people into the free newsletter. Now you capture the email, you own the email address, right? Goes into your email provider. And then also you can publish a newsletter like say weekly to start. So you publish a weekly newsletter. You can publish that newsletter on the blog. You can then you have one link at the end of that newsletter for, for more information, read this blog article, so you can actually write a blog article that way, and then you can promote sponsors, other articles on your website, and all of that. Now, this is really good for bloggers, too, because it's a lot of middle-of-the-funnel content to really get people to know, like, and trust you, and it's also a really good way to give Google the user signals that you're getting traffic out of outside of just Google. So if you do have a blog, a newsletter could be a way to get more traffic to the blog right? Get more traffic from the email list. So it's a really interesting new business that you should be looking at in 2024. So the two primary ways to grow the size of a newsletter is organically. So organic Twitter and LinkedIn, right? Updating, get to the free newsletter, get people that are interested. Or the quicker way is paid ads. So that could be Facebook and Instagram, like paid social ads to the newsletter, Twitter, Quora and Reddit ads, things that are cheap, you gotta find a really low cost per lead on that. So the primary revenue driver is sponsorships here, and then eventually you can sell your own course through the newsletter, depending on what your niche is. And there's newsletters for everybody out there. So there's some pros and cons, right? Pro here is traffic diversification, new revenue streams that's not reliant on just Google traffic. Like if you're struggling to get Google traffic, you could try social media accounts to newsletter and then take those newsletter people and send them to your blog. So that's good user signals to Google. And then there's also a few cons though, like if you're not gaining traction with organic posts, 
you really it's an entirely new strategy right writing a linkedin post to get engagement is all about you know a much different strategy it's like a mini blog post with like one sentence per line and all these interesting things for a more work-based you know audience that i'm not really a huge fan of but that's one con so you might have to advertise and spend money to grow this thing which is a con but you also might need a sales strategy to get sponsors right so they might magically show up if you have a big enough newsletter and just pay you but you probably have to have a sales strategy with a rate card and get sponsors to join get the links in send them to the right places and you need a lot of content so a newsletter you know even if it's weekly it doesn't sound like much but it can take a lot of effort to create a newsletter right so you have to either do that if you're blogging also but ultimately you know a newsletter is really interesting it's something that we're going to be doing next year to really just provide as much helpful content as possible test it out see how it works and go on from there so newsletter is number one because it's big the profit potential is in the millions and it's a great way to grow your blog diversify your revenue streams and as newsletters get more popular there's a ton of interesting tools you can use like beehive you can check their pricing page they have like a free launch plan up to 2500 subscribers sends custom newsletters they look really good they're designed really nicely right and they have tons of different features like the features keep growing in these newsletter software because like it's kind of still a new thing right so you can build a website around the newsletter with landing pages you can publish content automations you can use ai you can get ad revenue through it pop-ups monetization boosts subscriptions in there you can have a paid newsletter where people do pay you monthly or yearly to join i think there's less friction in a free one because everyone can just join you get tons of leads in and can do it through sponsorships but you can do a paid one as well so check out beehive it's an interesting product for newsletters the next strategy on my list is to leverage instagram now normally I don't recommend this for a number of reasons right there's a lot of friction in Instagram I always recommend like Google and YouTube primarily as your primary revenue driving online businesses for content creators YouTube you can create a ton of good content get people to just click links in the description affiliate links course links all kinds of links in the description right Instagram has a lot of friction meaning someone has to passively scroll right find your content like it enough that they click your profile then they like it enough to click the link in your profile, then that pops up. Then they either click an affiliate link, a course link. Let's say they click an affiliate link, then they have to get to that page, and then they have to check that, uh, buy the thing, check out, and there's like five to seven clicks involved in just making a simple affiliate sale, and there's no search intent because people are passively scrolling, not even looking for products necessarily, unlike YouTube and Google where people are searching for stuff and looking for things that they're interested in. However, Instagram is a good tool if you're in a certain visual niche, things like food or clothing or tattoos or gear or things like that that actually people you could leverage Instagram now I don't recommend you do it on its own just only have an Instagram account that's where people get lazy because everyone has an Instagram most people have a TikTok, and since everyone has one everyone's trying to create content on it but not everybody has a good YouTube channel right or a good website barely anyone does that's why you see in the Instagram links I challenge you start looking at people's Instagram accounts those affiliate links aren't getting many clicks. If they have a YouTube link in Linktree, you check their subscribers, it's probably like 600 or maybe a few thousand, right? Because you actually have to have a different strategy. But with LinkedIn, you can do a number of different things, you know, with an actual blog or a website, you know, in tandem with it. So for example, there's a website called The Banana Diaries. My wife follows this one. Lots of really good recipes, mostly like vegan desserts right so gluten-free stuff stuff tastes really good i've had a number of these probably too many of these to count anyways she has this she sells her own book on the website so there's a shop right you can get all kinds of stuff baking sheets pancake riddles and there's also the instagram so the instagram is really good because she has 446,000 followers tons of different people following and it's really visual it's a really visual example right that's how my wife found the account in the first place it wasn't by finding the website first right googling something a recipe to find it it was through instagram leveraging the followers to then get people to other things right and now there's a lot of recipes there's a ton of links here it's mainly just recipes she's trying to be as helpful as possible which is good but it's really building a true personal brand around this you know this specific niche and there's tons of good content on the site tons of recipes and things to follow so that's an interesting angle where if you have a blog and it's visual add an instagram account too, get more leads get people to the blog from instagram another good instagram account if you're not like a uh, you know female or baking oriented and you want to go the complete opposite direction well here's another example for one called warrior poet society so this is a guy he actually runs like an e-commerce company but it's all survival tactical gear guns defense all that kind of stuff right so he's got an instagram account with 295,000, tons of content tons of views tons of likes also has a youtube channel with 
a ton of subscribers. And that one coincides though with an actual website where there is a blog, right? So there's a website, there's all kinds of guides here, all kinds of stuff and an e-commerce store. So Instagram on its own isn't that great, right? You have to send people from Instagram to something else to make purchases, and that's typically a blog or website. All right, number three on this list is somewhat similar to number two, but it's selling physical products on a website, right? Traditional e-commerce, print on demand, in correlation with your blog, with other revenue streams. So you see that this blog here, Organic Olivia, has a blog, right? Tons of good content. Everything I knew about protein, calories, home runs, and insulin resistance. Tons of good content, but when you look at the top, there's also a podcast, there's also the blog, take the quiz, there's a shop. So she also sells like all kinds of different supplements and herbs and nootropics probably and things like that. So actually selling products on a blog as a personal brand is possible. That's where you can get to at a certain point, just like this one, the 10 best workout supplements for men. You Google it, you find a site like this, it's the Fit Father Project, but then you go to the store and there's actually an e-commerce store. It's probably hosted somewhere else potentially, but you can see that there's courses, there's different supplements, t-shirts, water bottles, and it's a pretty simple store, right? But you can add e-commerce elements to a website, right? That's one form of monetization that you can add into a strategy over time. You start with content, you start with Instagram, YouTube, blogging, getting attention and eyeballs on your stuff, sending them to a website, to an email list, and also getting people to purchase things on the site. So number four on the list is drop servicing. So this is kind of going the service route, the agency route, and creating another little tab on the website that says services or consulting or agency, right? And you're actually selling services to people. Now, drop servicing is interesting. We've all heard of drop shipping, where a supplier holds inventory for you, you create a website, you don't fulfill the order, you just send the information to the wholesaler, they send it for you, right? Drop shipping, easy form of e-commerce. It's hard to do, I tried it. You need tons of marketing. You need to actually get all the attention and eyeballs on your stuff, profit margins, all of it. However, drop servicing is interesting. It's taking the same concept and you as an agency would get work. So people would have inbound interest in working with you on like SEO consulting or digital marketing consulting or something that you do well, graphic design, whatever it is. But then you just outsource it to freelancers that actually do the work for you. So that's a way of doing it where you're not actually doing the work. You're just building the sales engine behind it checking the work and overseeing it as a business. So drop servicing is interesting. There's an example here of Panda Copy, which is an example of one copy done right, um, actually writing. So this site, it almost looks like a software site, right? You, you sounds awesome, you click it, you sign up for this ongoing recurring subscription, and then there's gonna be writers on the back end that are actually writing content, right? It's not AI content, but you're getting a certain amount of content every day and relatively cheap for what it is. But it seems like a drop servicing company because it's a website, it's a brand, but the brand, the owner's not writing all of these articles, right? He's actually sending it to other freelancers and writers to do that. And that's kind of what the agency model is. And that's the benefit of the agency model. One thing that we do teach in the consulting blueprint and all of our content in Blog Growth Engine is like, yeah, you wanna make thousands of dollars right away, charge for services, right? You don't get all your time freedom back necessarily but you actually might be able to leave your job a little bit quicker if you're selling things for thousands of dollars a month to a couple different clients, right? So drop servicing is another interesting one. If you have a blog, if you're building a LinkedIn following, that's probably where this stuff lives. People looking for consulting in the digital marketing world, add that little piece of information to your blog or website, have people fill out a form, contact them, get on a Zoom call. Solution-based sales, there's a big strategy to actually running an agency, but it's a very scalable business model and one that's interesting if you're struggling with other revenue streams and wanna make money faster. Next on the list, one of my personal favorites, and that's courses and communities. So a way that you can monetize YouTube, Instagram, blogging, everything, is to actually sell your own product, right? And sell your own informational product in a form of a course and community, not just an info product that you send to people and then say, bye-bye, I'll never talk to you again, but an actual good you know, course, community, coaching, all of that stuff wrapped into one. And that's how businesses run, right? Yes, you wanna start with affiliate marketing ads, things where we don't have to create a product yet, we don't need an audience. That's how everyone starts, that's how I started. I started doing a little bit of consulting, then I got to affiliate revenue because I don't have a product of any kind, info product, physical product, nothing like that. So I started creating content to make affiliate revenue, that grew, then it was time to create my own product because that's what a business is, one that has products and services, right? So courses and communities are great because you own the product, you can promote it to an email list, and you see here, this is ours, Blog Growth Engine, 
3,400 members. So online education is actually changing before our eyes and platforms like school are really easy to use. So you have a community tab where it's like a forum, all kinds of questions and answers in this tab. You also have the classroom so people can see like what the actual course is. This is where you actually take the course, right? You have something like the brand of you video, the personal brands path to seven figures. It's laid out in sequential order. It's probably 40 or 50 hours of videos and assignments and exercises. You have a calendar function, right? Where you have live Q and A's that people join on Zoom, members, leaderboards, all kinds of cool stuff. But a course and community is the first type of product that you should probably create. If you're stagnant with affiliate marketing and ads and it's not working, maybe you join YouTube, right? Sign up for a YouTube account, sell a course through YouTube because that's actually probably the fastest way to make money in 2024 is create really good videos, send people to links in the description, get them to buy your products because not information can't be free. This YouTube video can be free and I give tons, hundreds of hours of free YouTube content out there, right? And then people still are complaining because I have a course. So it's like, well, sometimes it's not just the videos of the course that are important. It's the community, the step-by-step -step instruction, the exercises, the coaching, the live events, right? That's what people typically want, right? So uh, there's a lot to that strategy. It's actually pretty simple if you just create content, get people into your email list, and then promote products that way, promote your own products, right? The newsletter example works the same way. You can get people from Twitter and LinkedIn into your email newsletter, eventually sell them your own course. You could get people from your YouTube channel to a link in the description to your own course, right? Send them to a lead magnet, get them into your email list, automate it that way. You could even create a YouTube account, get people to a Calendly link to book a call with you and sell them on your course in the matter of like 20 minutes, right? If you just booked like 10 of those a week, you could make 20 to $30,000 a month. I don't know if you had a $1,000 course. So there's simple ways of doing it. If you're on Instagram, that actually requires a little bit more handholding. That's more of a DM based sales approach where you get, you know, videos to pop off in reels into followers, into like DMs, stories, all of that stuff. So each platform has a little bit of a different strategy, but it's all, you know, getting attention in the attention economy through an algorithm to get them into your email list to sell them something. YouTube's slightly different than blogging, which is different than other platforms. But eventually, right, it's great to have your own product. Another thing you can do, number six, is to accept sponsored articles on your website. So if you have a website, if you have a blog, you could allow people to guest post, write articles, write sponsored articles, right on your website. You can charge anywhere from 250 bucks, 500, 2,500 or more. It really just depends on the traffic that your site gets, right? And what you can, what you can get out of a brand. It's like sponsorship, traditional YouTube podcasting or whatever, but it's just for a website, right? And that's a good way you can do it. So it can be time consuming, right? Especially on a blog with the helpful content update, you need to make sure that these articles are actually good. I've accepted guest posts in the past and I realized that actually sometimes editing the guest post for my own site took longer than just writing the thing from scratch. So it's not like the super easy way to just, oh, I'm just going to allow anyone to write on my site and then I won't have to write anything myself. Not necessarily the case. But uh, for example, if you're writing about like streaming services, you could have a streaming brand, write an article on like the seven best streaming services of 2024, and then do an individual review, like the company review. And you could charge them a flat fee for that. If you're ranking really well on Google, I did this in the past, if you're ranking on page one for a certain transactional term, like best webinar software, then you just charge the brand a flat fee every single month to maintain their position in the article. A little bit tougher of a strategy, you need a good amount of traffic and to be solidified on page one for that. But a sponsored article, it's just saying, hey, I accept sponsored articles on my site, here's what it costs. Pretty simple, have a contact form on your website that people can fill out if they're interested. Number seven on the list is to leverage YouTube or podcasting as a traffic source. So podcasting is an interesting one. This is one, uh, Jenna Kutcher, she has the Gold Digger podcast and she has a website here, you can see it's really simple. It's about her, the blog, book, courses, podcasts. So she has tons of articles like how I had 5,000 subscribers to my email list weekly. That is a lot of subscribers. And I imagine it's mostly through the podcast. So she has 250,000 subscribers. And so she's writing content, right? She's using this quiz to build her list as well, wherever that was, maybe on the homepage. But you have a podcast, you publish the show notes and articles on the actual blog itself, and you grow that through multiple platforms, right? So much like Instagram shouldn't live on its own, sometimes, you know, a blog can live on its own with affiliate and ads for a while, right? That's the whole point. That's what we teach in Blog Growth Engine. Create a passive income generating blog with a content machine to make affiliate revenue, ad revenue, and rank on Google for years to come, 
that's possible in many niches, including a lot of non-competitive ones like outdoor goods, certain certain types of products and services that not a lot of people are writing about. However, once you reach a certain point, you see most of these personal brands, you want to go to the expansion phase where you're actually going multi-platform. And it really depends on the niche. So for me, like teaching stuff, teaching blogging, teaching YouTube, social media, all of that, making money online, YouTube makes the most sense. Right? because I can actually talk to people, talk to subscribers, actually help people answer comments that are good when I can <laughs> and uh, do it that way. Whereas like we showed you with the food recipe stuff, Instagram makes more sense, right? With certain business type stuff, LinkedIn will make more sense to a newsletter. So really you have to start planning your third party platform monetization plan. So what I mean by that is figure out the platform you're gonna use outside of just a website to build an email list. Is it gonna be YouTube? Are you gonna be on video? Is it gonna be Twitter or LinkedIn for a newsletter? Are you a better writer? Are you okay with being on video? But you have to start thinking about how can I leverage another platform to get traffic to my website, to send people to my website, to build an email list and to make more money. Another example I really like is growveg.com. This is a gardening blog and YouTube channel. And it's a really good combination because when you think about it, you can really sell anything. They have like an app that they're selling. There's eBooks, guides, journals, right? So really you can sell anything, courses, eBooks, apps, whatever you want, affiliate links, ads, monetization. You just have to have a plan based on your niche and based on the platforms that you're using. All right, so we covered some of the new ways, some of the interesting concepts here. Now let's cover exactly what to do if you're starting from zero to make money online in 2024. So first, you have to start with your own personal brand. You are you, you are a unique person, you're a unique individual. You have a certain set of experiences in your life, your own identity, what message you wanna share with the world, things that you know more about than other people. Now, some of us aren't like an expert in really anything, but even if you're learning and you're a beginner in something that you're interested in, you can create content, create a website, create videos, whatever you wanna do over time, showing you learning the thing, right? And that's actually the truth is that most people online are beginners and they're searching for helpful information from anyone one tiny step above them. So even if you know, 10% about a certain topic, you might know more than, you know, a lot of people that don't know, they're at one or 2%. So you start with your personal brand and in blog growth engine, YouTube growth engine, all of our products, we really help you identify this with exercises and courses, because you have to go through this. This is a brainstorm where you have to write down literally everything that you've done, all your interests and hobbies, your professional experience, any leverages and advantages that you might have. And then there's a niche analysis, marketplace analysis, where it's like, is there affiliate opportunities here? Are there course opportunities? How much do these courses cost? What can I actually do, right? So it's a little bit deep, but really you have to start with a personal brand because that gives you the unlimited freedom to pivot and it lets you match YouTube with Instagram, with a blog, all of your platforms, whatever you end up doing can all be matched with just simply your name. It's easier. People follow people, not just faceless brands, right? You might say, you know, I'm never going to do YouTube. I'm never going to post on Instagram or I'm never going to start a website. Well, you never know what's going to happen in like one to two years from now, right? Because making money online is not easy. It takes time. It takes a real actual business behind it. And it's getting a little bit more difficult because you know you have to actually build a brand around yourself. And it's not hard. You just follow a simple content strategy, but you have to be open to the idea of going multi-platform. You know, if it's strictly text and newsletter, do a blog, Twitter, and LinkedIn, right? If it's more video focused, it's probably going to be blog, YouTube, Instagram. And it really depends on your niche, what you're interested in, and what you're good at. So first you have to figure out what your niche is, right? We have tons of content on that. We cover it in courses and stuff, but really then we come up with your content strategy. So I always say, start with a website first, an actual blog, right? You can start with a simple domain name, just at yourname.com. Some people ask me, what if my name's really hard to spell? Well, just do it anyways, or create a small variation, right? We're just giving ourselves a name so we have the freedom to pivot our content to whatever, whatever works, because sometimes stuff just doesn't work. And if we're only a tiny niche site, that's the name of the website, we can't pivot to something else because we're kind of stuck. So the truth is all of this stuff has to be personalized to the individual because all of us get stuck. All of us hit random roadblocks to learning how to run an online business. It could be QuickBooks, it could be SEO, it could be some random component of affiliate marketing or what equipment do I use to shoot a YouTube video? Use your iPhone in a window if you need to, right? It's about just creating helpful informational content to help an audience. But we have to come up with some content. So for example, if you're a blog and you wanted to talk about like, again, with the, the example from before, like tactical gear and stuff, well, you could put in like best tactical. 
into Ahrefs. And in the matching terms tool, you'll see all the different keywords and articles that you could write. These are each individual articles you could write about tactical flashlights, shotgun boots, backpacks, pants, watches, knives. And you see the difficulty here is really low, right? So that means that not many other sites are writing about it. You could rank for it. And then again, these are perfect when they have best for affiliate revenue because those are people searching. Their search intent is to look at and compare different products and you send them to affiliate links and make income that way. Or like you could use a tool like Glimpse, right? I put in like, you can go to categories. I put in like, I clicked on the personal care category and it shows you what's trending in Google Trends. So it shows me like detergent sheets, pimple patches. It's blurring out these for some reason. I probably don't have a paid plan. Scar tape, scalp scrubber. It gives you a bunch of ideas of, yeah, I don't have the expert plan. Anyways, it uses Google Trends. You can just use Google Trends by itself to discover new trends, put in categories, see what search volume's rising. Because again, to create content that actually gets people's attention and then can be monetized, it has to get the attention first. Now to get the attention, it pretty much needs to be not that competitive or saturated, which means it probably should be new, not old. Right? If we're talking about refrigerators and blenders, good luck ranking against rollingstone.com and all of these different product review sites and product review channels and all of that. So again, you can use Google Trends to find stuff. If you're doing the video route, you can use something like vidIQ or TubeBuddy or something like that. Like I just put in ChatGPT and it shows me all different types of matching terms and videos I could create. So vidIQ is specific to video content, but like ChatGPT4 plus you could write about or uh, create videos on making money with ChatGPT, ChatGPT prompt engineering. So first, whether it's, you know, shorts, video content on YouTube or blog posts, you should have some type of keyword strategy at first. Now, what goes, we don't need to go viral here with content. It's not about going viral and getting a million views every video. This is about creating a consistent content strategy that provides a backlog of content that gets consistent views and attention over time. So a blog can rank on Google and continue to get traffic month after month after month. YouTube videos can get YouTube search traffic, YouTube recommendation traffic, and continue to get views month after month after month, right? Things that only go viral, or like Instagram reels that go viral, they get a couple million views and then they drop off and die, and that's their shelf life, and that's just how shorts work, typically. They can go for a while, but you have to be like the top 0.1% of videos that actually pop off, and there's a strategy to that and all that. However, what I'm saying is, it's good to start with a keyword-focused approach with your content as a content creator, because you're giving the algorithm a better understanding of what your site, your channel, anything is actually about, right? We know that videos on YouTube that pop off are like, I did this crazy thing and here's what happened. I locked myself in my house for five years. Here's what happened. I don't recommend you spend five years on a video, but those types of videos can pop off. But you, t you know, they're tough when you're just starting a brand new channel with zero subscribers to do that. Like, yes, down the line on YouTube, really create really interesting title and thumbnail derived video ideas. But at first, just start with simple keyword ideas. Some of our most successful videos are like the old ones where we just said, how to do keyword research, right? Really simple stuff like that, that actually tell YouTube what your channel's about. People can find it in search month after month after month. So no matter what, you start with a content strategy. You can base it on informational and transactional searches. So transactional is the best, best tactical flashlight, right? This product versus that product. Product focused ones are you know, reviews, product reviews and stuff like that. That's transactional. You wanna have more informational though. So informational is like how to do stuff, how to swing a golf club, how to chip a golf club, how to putt a golf club, right? How to do things in your niche. And that should be like 80% of your actual content, video and blog content. Because with the blog and the helpful content update, you can't be seen as just a random affiliate site, only writing best transactional posts and nothing else. Google doesn't like that. Now with YouTube, you can probably just only do transactional articles, but then you're pigeonholed into only being an affiliate YouTube channel where you're just only reviewing products. You're reviewing a lot of products, but you're not really teaching anything important, right? And you're not able to sell a course in the future because you're only talking about products. So you have to have both informational content on Instagram and YouTube to help the audience, uh, help an audience, right? This isn't about entertaining people. This isn't about shooting a bunch of videos outside, going in public and making comedy videos, and then putting them on YouTube and getting a little bit of ad revenue to the broadest possible audience. This is about finding a niche audience. This is like the anti-YouTube YouTube strategy, right? That's what we do. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not trying to get a million subscribers. I'm trying to find the tiny subset of people that are actually interested in working with us and building content-driven businesses. And it's a pretty small niche. You think like, oh, blogging's huge. 
people trying to do this is huge. It's actually way smaller than you would think. So we're trying to find people with helpful content. Long videos like this, which people actually tend to like, you know, we tried shorter videos, flashy videos, and what we realized is people like longer, the most helpful content possible with the, you know, most value. And that's what we try to do, provide the most value in our YouTube videos and provide the most value in our actual products with things like coaching, support, community, and all of that. However, that's a long-winded way of saying you need to have a content strategy. Then you need to think about your sub-niche strategy. So what are you really going to be known for? So really diving in, and this is hard to choose at first. So we don't want to say, I'm going to be the guy that only talks about long-range thermal optic scopes, if you're a hunter or something like that, right? You could eventually be known as the thermal optic person, right? And know about night vision goggles and thermals and stuff like that. But if it doesn't work and you're like hammering content in only one area at first, it's a little bit harder when you're a beginner, you're just starting out because the truth is your first content, whether it's blog posts, videos, or shorts are going to be your worst pieces of content, right? As a content creator, you go back to my oldest YouTube videos. They suck. They're all right. Now the editing is a lot better. We have a great editor. I'm a little bit better delivery wise. It took me a couple of years of just doing it, but your first stuff's going to kind of suck. So you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, have it all suck and then not give yourself the freedom to pivot into other content topics that then you don't suck because it might take you a month or two to be comfortable talking to an empty lens with no one in the room, right? So you have to eventually over time find a sub-niche strategy where you just wanna have an elevator pitch of one sentence. What is your brand? If you have a face on a website, face on a YouTube channel, what is the brand? Now I get the question a lot. Do I actually have to show my face? We say yes. But if you absolutely, ultimately just can't stomach the idea of doing it, then there are ways to create faceless content. Blog content is faceless. If I'm doing a review of something and I'm doing a voiceover and the camera is just down at my hands, right? If that makes you more comfortable, that's fine. There's a lot of documentary style YouTube videos and channels. It's a lot of B-roll with voiceovers, right? Teaching a certain thing. So it's possible, it's just a lot harder if you can put yourself in the forefront because that's some of the biggest brands out there, Mr. Beast, Joe Rogan, big podcasters, comedians, people in niches that actually teach. If you're a teacher, you can't just, you know, be like uh, the whale, Brendan Fraser, and turn your camera off, right? <laughs> like, great movie, but not the best way to teach or create content. If you're gonna create content, you probably wanna think about putting yourself on the content. Just saying. So after we hone in on the subnet strategy, we have to talk about the four phases of monetization. So how you're actually gonna monetize this thing. Now, and in what order, right? Do I start, do I create a course out of nowhere? Do I reach out to sponsors when I have no views? Well, obviously not, right? So we start with the content strategy, then we move to affiliate marketing first because affiliate marketing is helping sell other people's products. Now there's products in any niche, right? There's things we can talk about. There's everything that you could possibly buy in America, the consumerist economy, you might as well make a little bit of money at recommending stuff, right? So you start with affiliate because you don't have a physical product, you don't have a course, but you can create content around products, right? And make a percentage, your commission on every sale. That's why we start with that. And it's because it's really simple. You just create the transactional content around it. And, you know, it's even better sometimes for YouTube because blogging takes time to rank these articles. It might take three months even sometimes six. If you are if you go off the little, really low competition thing, you can do it a lot faster. With a YouTube video, you can publish it, get views, get people to click affiliate links on the same day, pretty much. But you start with affiliate first. You want to have an affiliate marketing strategy. I have tons of videos on that. I was an affiliate manager in my previous career, turned into an actual affiliate. You know, my blog at its peak was making $150,000 a month or $200,000 a month. Plus with YouTube and courses, we're making substantially more than that. I don't like talking about it anymore. It's like, it was good at first because it's social proof and it helps, but um, it is what it is. So you start with affiliate marketing. Next you move to ads because ads are pretty passive, right? You join the YouTube partner program. It's just a matter of creating videos and getting content out there. Same thing with blogging. You get your traffic to like 10,000 monthly visitors. You join an ad network like a Zoic, Media Thr Mediavine or Ad Thrive. I don't recommend AdSense. You add banner ads to your website you make some money that way. So, uh, really simple, especially in some niches where there's tons of traffic like recipes, 
but not a lot of people buying stuff after they search for the recipes. That's where ads come in. You can make money for all the people that are just gonna leave the site. Next is sponsorships. So once you're getting some traction and traffic or views, you can have a sponsorship strategy. So really simple, charge a flat fee for inclusion in a 30 second spot on YouTube or in an article on a blog. It's really that simple. You can have an ongoing monthly fee or a one-time fee. So we've covered, you know, you have content. You created it on Instagram, YouTube, a blog. You have either, you know, you're creating one or podcast, whatever it is. There's text, there's video, and there's audio, right? That's pretty much all there is out there as far as content goes. So you start with affiliate ads, sponsorships, great strategies. You can get these to $10,000 a month doing blogging, writing a number of articles, having it on YouTube. If you just make a couple thousand in affiliate, three to five in sponsorships, more in ads, you're there, surpass your salary. Next is what I call the expansion phase. And this is really important. Most people never get to this phase because they give up before getting to this phase. They get disheartened and give up. But some people, you know, if you've been trying, you've been trying blogging, you've been trying drop shipping, you've been trying to start some type of business online and none of it's worked. It's because there's so many different things it could be, but mainly it's that you don't know what you don't know. You're missing one tiny component to make everything work. And it can be really challenging to identify what that is. Is it the niche I chose? Is it my content strategy? Is it like something related to an algorithm that I can't really control or I don't know? Well, it's hard. And the truth is the answer to that a lot of the times isn't just create more content in the same way. It's let's pivot. You know, I've been blogging for two years. I've made no money. Let's pivot then. Let's not keep doing the exact same thing. And the pivot is let's go multi-platform. Let's try something new. So there's different ways to do this. And there's a couple different things. One is actually selling your own product. So creating an actual product and going to YouTube or social media and video. Another one is starting a newsletter, right? Going to Twitter, LinkedIn, and building an email list that way. So creating you know, your own product and course is really super lucrative. This is a world I didn't know existed just a few years ago when we started the YouTube channel. For example, if I go to this YouTube channel, for Jeffrey here, he talks about relationships. So how to save a marriage, you know, how to save a relationship in marriage, things you can do to have a better relationship. 61,000 subscribers. So pretty good, but not by any means a big channel. Videos are getting a thousand, two thousand, hundreds, three thousand views a video. His most popular has 500,000, 300. He's got 300 videos on the channel over time, over the last four years. So looking at this channel on the outside, you think it's a pretty small YouTube channel talking about relationships, right? If you look at one of the YouTube, how much is he money making on YouTube? Some calculator would probably be like $30 a month, right? But the truth is, to my knowledge, he's making six figures a month from selling his own product. That's the key. That's the key to monetization on a lot of these platforms is you can't just rely on ad revenue. You can't rely on YouTube ad revenue. You have no control over that how many views you're getting, right? You're only reliant on that. So the truth is we get around 300 to 500,000 views on YouTube every month. Probably one of the biggest content blogging related channels out there from a monthly view standpoint. We make probably $80,000 a year in YouTube ad revenue. Sounds pretty good, right? 80 grand a year to be on YouTube just from ad revenue. Pretty good. But uh, the truth is that's 3% of our business's revenue. 3%, right? It's just from ads. That's probably the case with Jeffrey here too. It's because you have your own product, you have sponsorships and affiliate, all these revenue streams working together with other channels, with things going on, right? So 97% of our revenue, if we go back a couple of years, we've made, we've gotten about 9 million views on YouTube and we've made over $6 million on YouTube just from courses, affiliate sponsorships, tiny bit of ads, right? So this whole strategy is new and it works. It's creating a real business on YouTube, a real business behind a blog, but you have to have the right strategy. And eventually you should have your own product because that is what actually makes you money. You don't get a 10% commission from affiliate marketing. You get a hundred percent commission on your own product right now. This is the expansion phase. This is going multi-platform. This is deciding after I have a website, do I go to Instagram? Do I go to YouTube? Do I do a newsletter? What am I going to do? Right? And I wouldn't get discouraged because this thing takes time, right? All of this takes time. To have a blog, like where I'm at now, having a blog and a YouTube channel and a couple courses and communities and social profiles, and then we're gonna build a newsletter. Like it's been a four and a half to five year process. I didn't start that way. I started with one blog, no traffic, no backlinks, no articles, and I grew that first. Two and a half years in, that's when I started the YouTube channel. Now probably four to five years in is when we're expanding again. 
So the team keeps growing, we keep building, and then we create one of the biggest, from a revenue standpoint, content-driven businesses in the world. And the truth is I'm not famous, I'm not popular, no one really cares, and I can just be a random person but make a lot of money doing it just from creating a simple content business. I'm not extroverted, right? I didn't even wanna be on YouTube and create simple videos in an office. I'm not out in the world creating Hollywood style videos. It's a way that really anyone, based on their skills, based on their experience, what niche they choose, if they wanna write stuff or if they wanna shoot videos, an actual way to take some of your freedom back, your time freedom back. Because it's not about money for me really, like the money is only a means to an end to actually do what I wanna do. I don't have to go to work. Right. YouTube is not work to me. It's pretty fun. Yes, I have to shoot videos every week if I want to maintain traffic, views, all of that stuff. So I was blogging and it was 100% passive and I chose to do YouTube because I honestly got bored with passive income. But really, it's just a way to get some of your time freedom back. Spend more time with your kids, save for retirement, right? If you do the nine to five, you work for 30 to 40 years, you save one to $2 million in retirement, retire when you're 60 or 70. That's one way to do it. And it's not bad. You just have to enjoy the moments that you have when you're not working, or just hopefully enjoy your job enough and like the people that you work with where it doesn't bother you. But I was always, I always wanted to live a little bit differently. I didn't want to be a corporate servitude where I'm working 40 hours a week for the rest of my life. So the quickest way to escape is to create something for yourself and no one else. Have a backup plan, build it while you're working full time. And the best ones to do that is content because content is what people consume on the internet. You just have to have the right strategy either in the form of text or video and then you just have to monetize it the right way. So if you're interested in learning more of the exact process, more step-by-step -step guidance, 80 minutes of free training, a lot more in depth than this video could be, make sure to click the link in the description and top comment below, give that a watch. And let me know what you think. Do, do any of these really stand out to you as some of the best ones, like maybe a newsletter? That's probably my favorite one for 2024 right now. My favorites are like newsletter, if you're text-based, Twitter, LinkedIn, paid ads to growing a newsletter, and also YouTube and course stuff if you're teaching. So I hope that was interesting to you. You know, blogging is a really interesting business model. I still wanna talk about it a lot. I still really think it's the best for beginners because you can make mistakes, you just write content, you can infinitely update text-based content, right? But there's been a lot of algorithm changes. So I think it's time to like reevaluate what other revenue streams and other platforms we can leverage to help the website. So let me know what you think. As always, please like the video, comment with any questions or anything you think. Subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. I'll see you in another video.